the reason I'm choosing to make this video now is because of how much AI is impacting nine to five work. And like it or not, the main reason to go to college is to prepare yourself to get the kind of work that you want. The only work that I wanted to do when I was in high school going into college was write books. And I held on so tightly to that dream that I was putting in the work, but I was closing myself off to change. And I really could have used some therapy, but I didn't go to therapy in college at all. The main reason I didn't try therapy until I was 25 is that I thought it would be really hard to find someone I liked and trusted enough to be completely honest about what I was struggling with. That's why the sponsor of today's video is BetterHelp. It's the easiest possible way to find a therapist who's right for you. All you need to do is answer a few questions about yourself and BetterHelp will match you to a professional who's had years of experience helping other people with struggles that are parallel to yours. The matching process usually doesn't take more than 48 hours, so you'll be able to talk to someone pretty soon. The first time I tried therapy, I only went once and it felt great for a little while, like I had dealt with what I needed to deal with, said what I needed to say, and could move on with my life. I fooled myself into thinking that I'd given it a shot and I didn't really need it anymore. But I would encourage you to go at least a few times before you decide how you feel about it. If you choose to use my link to sign up, that's betterhelp.com slash William Dozier, you'll get 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp. I majored in English and media studies at the University of Virginia and in one of our alumni magazines recently, there was a really great graphic that compared the top 10 majors in 2013 to the top 10 majors in 2023. I started there, uh, this is gonna age myself, I started at UVA in 2014, graduated in 2018. So this was really interesting to me because this was the breakdown of what people were majoring in right when I was coming into the university versus what they're majoring in now. This article I'm referencing was written by Sarah Lindenfield Hall. It's called Major Shifts, and I'll link it in the description if I can find an online version of it. The main trend that's being illustrated in that article is the slight decline of traditional liberal arts majors like English, history, and the rise of STEM majors. And this makes total sense to me. STEM majors are more obvious tools that you can use in the professional world. Having actual coding skills is gonna set you up really well for a job. And knowing Chaucer backwards and forwards or being able to recite the first 14 lines of the Canterbury Tales those are not things that you can list on your resume to get you a job. But I mentioned AI at the top of this video because AI is going to replace so much of what we do at a desk job in the future. And so your job, if you're working at a desk and you're being paid to think, is going to be to orchestrate what this AI is doing. You're going to need to think for yourself on a human level and think for a company on a more human level, keeping maybe the customers in mind or the patients, et cetera, that you're serving through your business or wherever you work. And so if you're not going to be going into extreme amounts of debt, I think that a traditional liberal arts major is still very much so worth it, but you just have to know if you're majoring in it because you wanna slack off and have a lot more fun in college, which, listen, that's perfectly fine. You just, you have to be honest with yourself about why you're majoring in what you're majoring in. That's why I picked two majors. I picked my English major as well as a media studies major. And media studies was my more professional, more forward thinking major of the two. The reason I picked English, it's probably obvious, but I've always known that I'm a writer and I knew that I was going to be trying my hand at writing novels for pretty much the rest of my life. So while I was at the University of Virginia, which has a pretty epically good English program, there was no way I wasn't going to be in that small cohort of people studying writing within the greater English major. I believe that knowing yourself better is the whole point 
of college. I think that it is a perfect stretch of time right when you're starting to become an adult to understand what you're about, what you want to try to do in the world. And although college is a bubble, I think it's important to be as kind of sober and clear as you can about who you think you are, what you think you could do in the world, and figure out how you can be a positive agent of change. In college, so much is learned from just conversations and going out and having fun, but it's also a really scary time because a lot of doors are fully closing and most of your high school friendships, except for the ones that are important to you, are starting to fade away. I got to a pretty lonely place and I had a lot of good friends and family who I could talk to, but looking back, I know that I needlessly suffered more than I had to. I believe that there is an easy way to set yourself up for your future and a hard way to do it. The hard way is to go against your natural inclinations and ignore the things that you're best at just because you think that majoring in a STEM major or more specifically learning how to code or going to business school, that is what is going to prepare you, give you the tools to make the kind of money you need to give you the future that you want, i.e. maybe have a family or just be financially secure and be able to enjoy the company of your friends and family without feeling like you're a burden on them. That's the hard way. The easier way is to be honest with yourself about who you are, what your interests are, and the kind of work that you want to do, and lean into that. I started to do that more over time while I was in college, and it certainly made my experience a lot easier. It was much harder when I was taking pre-med classes with no actual intention of becoming a doctor. So if I could leave you with one thing, it would be just to take your time don't commit right at the beginning of school. I know sometimes you have to, like if you're choosing between whether to go to engineering school or kind of the general college, but I'm here to tell you that there is a lot of upside to choosing a liberal arts major. I found my way a few years after school to making this channel, and I've gotten a lot out of recommending books to people. I've gotten a lot out of finally being able to publish a story of my own, and what I gave up to pursue those natural inclinations of mine, so worth it, so worth it. If you can, double major, pick something that you love and something that you like well enough that's not you going against the grain that you think will set you up better for a job in the future. Um, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. College is a tough time, but it's also super fun. And uh, man, I wish I could do it over again.